Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to handle status codes in an API. In this case, it'll be a RESTful API, but of course it can be any kind of API. The idea is how do you handle status codes in something that won't be viewed by people, instead it will be viewed by machines. So I will demonstrate that. And just as a reminder, the status codes in HTTP are pretty much 200, 400 and 500. So those are what you typically use in an API. Uh, 300s are redirects, so you wouldn't use them much. And 100s are more low level, so you wouldn't use those as well. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to give a few examples. So let me start up a Flask app that's going to represent my API. So app is Flask name. And then I'll create a single route and I'll call it just API. And I'll return something JSONified. So I'll, I'll import JSONify and I'll pass results equals success just as a test. Okay, so let me start the server. And instead of using the browser to do the request, I will use Postman, it's a little easier. So the URL is going to be my localhost port 5000 slash API. If I send a request, I see result success. So that's exactly what I want. And I also see that the status is 200, okay. So, Postman is nice enough to tell me what this means. It basically means that everything went well. Uh, there were no problems, which is great. So the first example would be, let's say API, the endpoint API, instead of being a get request, it's a post um, endpoint. So let me change this to post methods post and Let's pretend that the client sent some data over and we're gonna take that data and create a new thing, let's say a new user. And then we want to tell the client that the user was successfully created. So we can use a 200 error code, but if we follow along with the HTTP status codes, we can also use 201, which is created. So to change the status code from 200 to 201, you simply have to uh, return a separate value from your route. So I'll return JSONify and I'll return the status code that I want, 201. So I'll save that, the server should have restarted. And now I'll send the request. A get request returns a 405 error because this only allows for posts. So if I change this to post and send it, I'll get success. And then the status over here is 201, which is what I pass back. So another thing could be, let's say this is a login method. So uh, it can still be post, let's just say post. Uh, you probably wouldn't have post as your login method. Well, yeah, let me change this again. Let's pretend this is a login uh, resource and I'll return result success. And let's say everything goes well. So let's say if true, meaning the login was validated, I'm going to return 200. And if it's not true, then I'll return, let's say something else. So the result won't be a success. Let's say result is failure. And then I'll pass back a 401, meaning forbidden. Let me just verify that. Uh, 401 unauthorized. So the user can't log in for whatever reason, so I pass back unauthorized. And to make it a little more clear on exactly what happened, I could say the error here is 401. So I have the error twice, just to make it easier for the client to figure out what's going on. And in, along with the error, I can have a message. 
saying um, unauthorized. So if I save this and run it, I'll do a git. So remember, we're pretending that this is a login uh, endpoint. So if I get, I get success and 200 is true. Now let's say that it fails, so false. I'll let the server restart and then I will get it again. And now I get this error 401 unauthorized and it's a failure. And I see the status over here is 401. So you can use these status codes in your app to kind of tell the client what's going on. You just don't want to fail and not tell them anything because if you do that, there's no way they can actually fix it. So anytime the client does something wrong, you want to give them as much information as possible. That's why you should have in your JSON response, even on errors, exactly what the error code is. So in this case, 401 and give them a message and as much information as possible for them to overcome this error so they don't have it in the future. And that's pretty much the same with any other status code. Uh, we see like 400 bad requests. So let's say they pass in some data that doesn't quite fit with your um, expectations. Then you can pass back a 400 bad request. Uh, 402 payment required. I've never seen this in real life, but hey, maybe they need to pay before they use your API. And if they haven't paid, then you can send back a 402 error code and uh, all the other error codes here. I just noticed this 418 on the teapot. You could send that back if you want. <laughs> so that's it for this video. I just want to show you how to return error codes or just status codes in general when using or when creating an API because it's a little different from uh, a user who browses your web app and they can actually see the HTML coming back. When you're dealing with some kind of API, you're not dealing with HTML. You want to send JSON responses. And the status that you send back is actually more important because it's being read by a machine. And whoever is using your API on the other end, it will be a lot easier for them to uh, handle error cases when you pass back status codes, the proper status code. So that's it for today's video. If you have any questions about this, just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.